Land Rover Discovery Sport again. Diesel exhaust fluid malfunction, dosing malfunction. Except this one had codes for the NOx sensor, NOx temperature sensor, which has been replaced. This is the old one. The new one apparently needed a different connector, which comes separately. But what's been done on this one is this chunk here has been cut out. So this chunk is in a different place on the new sensor to the old sensor. But as far as we can see, the pins are exactly the same. There shouldn't be any difference with the pin out. But now we've got this countdown to no engine restarts and we've got no communication with the new sensor. So we've got previously, I'll show a picture of the codes that we had previously, which were to do with the temperature not being in range, but all these appear to be communication errors. What I found on two machines is that the add blue level or diesel exhaust fluid level is showing as zero and it telling us to top it up. And it actually turned out that the add blue tank was empty. We managed to add 12 litres. Now this isn't I wasn't the one originally diagnosing this. It's actually been to Land Rover and had a health check. And yet they haven't noticed that the hard blue is empty. Although, no message is coming up on the dash. And today, I've plugged it back in and we're still getting a level of zero. So it's possible that the level sensor is broken. But how this would relate to the NOx sensor and the new NOx sensor not communicating, not sure right now. We're going to swap back to the old sensor, the original sensor. If you don't want to remove too much, you can just remove a few 10 mil notes and squeeze up the side of the tunnel to remove the module. to undo these clips but you can get them with a screwdriver. This connector's a bit awkward. You've got to pull the plastic tab out and then I've had to use a screwdriver under to unclip it. Doesn't seem to press or pull. Twenty two mil. So this is the original, supposedly discontinued sensor. Five pins, but it only uses four of them. Same on the new one. And the difference is on the new one, I can see, is 
this part is separate, so you don't have to spin the wiring when refitting. Part number is slightly different, but it's still a Bosch part number. Let's see. As you can see, the plastic trunk is in a different place, which is why you end up needing this adapter connector and you've got to adjust to change the connector to fit it to the car, supposedly. Very odd. Insulated the wires on the original sensor. Should be a bit of extra protection. So now we'll try to start up with the old sensor refitted. We've still got the. No, the code's gone away. So something to do with that NOX sensor, fitting a new NOX sensor, causes the issue with the diesel engine fluid. But now we're in a position where we've topped up the add blue tank with 12 litres, but we're not 100% sure why it's still showing empty, so it may st it may even be overfilled at this present time. Uh, but we do have the engine light on, so we'll plug in for that. So I'll plug it in, check what codes we've got now. These are different codes now. Well, we've got these two codes that were after refilling the add blue. And hopefully these other codes will erase. And what I can't understand is why the new sensor makes the problem worse is is the new sensor not compatible for some reason and if not why it's this you know the the old sensor's been discontinued but it's this new sensor supersedes it but it makes the issues worse so now we've got this one code we'll see if any of these others come back so we haven't got any knock sensors coming back but we've got a permanent error code fault during first filling test. So I, it's, it is looking like the issue was an empty ad blue tank, but I'll just have to check. So we've only got the one permanent code still. Tried using the Artel to get the purge and pressure test, but the only hot functions that we've got are EGR and DPF, so we haven't got any to do with the ad blue system. So I'm gonna switch back to the Autologic now. exactly the same as what happened before waiting for change in vehicle state no idea what that means doesn't give you any idea and the only way to get out of it was to turn it off still reading a zero so I'm now wondering if it's over full or the sensor is broken got these same two codes which I've read online after overfilling will cause these codes. So I've been running the car for a day, so we're on the next day now. Engine lights stayed on and one of the codes to do with the knock sensor has come back but not the other two. This one won't erase at all and this one would erase but does I don't know if it'll come back in today, but it's it's one of the previous codes. So the next thing I'm gonna try is draining the add blue tank. I 
three 8mm bolts, one of them snapped off here, and one 10mm. Wow, that's just mud. I'm assuming that's the pump. So it's just like mud that's been sat on the tray. forward partially remove the pump and letting it drain out from there just very slowly so as I was over a pit I couldn't see this side of the tank and actually we've got a drain tucked away up here And after cleaning all the, the muck out, eventually I have been able to pull it off. But it is pretty tricky. So this is what's come out of the air blue tank. We've got a 10 litre container, which is probably about 12 litres, and another litre or so, which ties up with what we put in, and means that the tank was low, if not completely empty, but not displaying an error on the dashboard. So right now, with 100% certainty, I know there is no add blue in the tank and yet we don't have any error messages nothing telling us to top it up just the same engine light from before now looking in the owner's handbook it says that the fluid level can be checked on the dash so i've gone to the vehicle info menu that it's told me to go on and it says there should be a diesel engine fluid section on here and there isn't but I have found it in next service now I have zero exhaust fluid in the tank and yet it says 15,000 miles Something not right. Well, I'll only show you with the engine off. Driven the car three miles and it's knocked one mile off the exhaust fluid refill, but the tank has no fluid in it whatsoever. So it shouldn't be reading 15,000 miles, it should be reading zero. I've now added exactly five litres to the tank and I've driven half a mile and it's dropped the figure down to 13,856 
from 15223. So there is a chance that the sensor is working or working not very well. So I'll take the car for a drive and see if it goes down to something that correlates with 5 litres in the tank. Next morning, this car is still showing 13856. I'm going to take the car for a drive now. It's been about 15 miles, and the figure has gone down to 6,400 miles, which does almost correlate with 5 litres in the tank. So perhaps the sensor is working, if not accurately. We'll see. So plug back into Autologic. I've managed to find the level and it shows 6.1 litres which is 1.1 litres above what I know that I've put in but it is close to accurate. I've also checked the codes again and we've still got these two NOx sensor codes 16A4 that just will not delete no matter what we do and we've got the 16A6 back again. I've just cleared those codes and they've actually stayed off for the first time and the engine light's gone off. So I'm still of the belief that this all this was to do with the tank level sensor, the AdBlue level sensor. And I've only just managed to get it to reset itself. Uh, this is very odd. So now I've managed to get the engine light off, we've got a somewhat accurate AdBlue level, or AdBlue mileage remaining. I think what I'm going to do is give the car back to the owner and see if the engine light comes back on, because this is the first time we've had the engine light off. And I won't post this video until... A few weeks have gone by and I'm sure that it's actually fixed it. But in summary, we've the car the car has possibly been overfilled with AdBlue in the past. It has then been run empty, but the no errors have ever come up on the dashboard telling the owner to fill up the car. The engine light has come on with knock sensors and um cat temperature problems. And then we've had these codes that are unerasable. We've added Ad, AdBlue. We've filled the AdBlue tank, but haven't been sure what the level is. We couldn't get a level on the car or on the diagnostic equipment. But now we've got 6.1 litres showing. I know for a fact that I've put 5 litres in this tank. So that is slightly above, but it is close-ish to close -ish to accurate. I've tried to do a prime and pressure test, it won't complete it, and I haven't actually done any of the other procedures. The previous person diagnosing the faults on this car changed the NOx sensor, but this was also with advice from Land Rover, who did a health check on it and didn't even check the AdBlue level. Whether they would just go by what it says on the dashboard... I don't know, but that's it's really not good enough. So the knock sensor was changed, but didn't appear to be communicating with the car. So it's like they've been provided with a knock sensor that it's it's a knock sensor that supersedes the original. So it's not the exactly original part number, but it doesn't seem to communicate with the car at all. So, assuming I do post this video, I'll let the owner have the car back and see if the engine light stays off. I've tried to do this SCR monitoring service application and I've managed to get everything ready except the stored ammonia so I've had the NOx sensors apparently working 
but this Stardomania level says out of range. I don't know if it should be low or high. I'm going to carry out a DPF regen as well. This has to be done on the road, so we'll be recording this. So we've got the level down to 0.45 grams, which is less than we even needed. So probably switch this off. This is the final effort in using this new sensor. So I spoke to Land Rover and they insist that the new connector is required for the new sensor to work. I can't physically see why the connector is exactly the same. Exactly the same dimensions. Exactly the same pin out. So I can't see how this will make any difference whatsoever. I'm going to do it anyway and see what happens. So we're not changing anything on the modules. Pins are the same length and the pin order is exactly the same. So absolutely no idea. To switch over the pins from the old connector to the new connector, lift open this flap and then press down on the little tab to release the pin. And once the pin has been released, you can pull the cable out of the top of the old connector and simply insert it in the correct position on the new connector. Pins all moved across, close the cover. I'll transfer the blank from hole 5 over to the new connector. New module, new sensor fitted again with the updated plug. How this could make any difference whatsoever, I have no idea, but that's what I've been told to do. engine light straight away but we'll have to check for cards so huge surprise the code is back in So it's, everything is pointing to this sensor being faulty, still. And those new connectors 
aren't required. I've no idea why they want you to fit a new connector, whether it's just extra money. They're about six quid. Or they're 30 quid. I can't remember if they're even 30 quid from Land Rover. It's just stupid. I won't give up immediately. I'll get the... I'll borrow the Autologic from Motec again. See if I can do that oxygen reset. Oxygen sensor reset, but otherwise it is looking like a faulty sensor. And there we go, a few miles down the road, engine light on. New sensor, new connector, as instructed by Land Rover. Same fault. Just found this on the snap-on, which is exactly the process I was going to do on the Autologic. very much doubt. The new sensor has no communication, so to be honest, I can't see how a setup can be done on the new sensor when it can't communicate anywhere. Back on with the Land Rover knock sensor issue, probably two months since I started this job. Where we're at today is the brand new sensor was fitted for about a month and obviously, well actually probably a couple of weeks and the 500 mile countdown was there again. A few hundred miles later, refitted the original sensor, but this time it hasn't actually brought on an engine light when it was bringing on the engine light really quickly with a short circuit code, which was like P229E14 or something like that. That hasn't come back in. But to prove that the brand new sensor from Land Rover is incompatible and that a new sensor a correct new sensor would have fixed the issue. I've ordered a used one with the exact same Bosch part number on it. Whereas the brand new sensor from Land Rover ends in 553 slash 554. And I believe, currently, the only thing that makes sense 
that this sensor is either faulty or incompatible. As soon as you plug it in, it loses communication, won't work whatsoever, and you get the 500 mile countdown on the dash. The car's been driven for about 500 miles and the engine light hasn't come on. Got these codes, but none of them are current or permanent. So what I'm going to do is fit the new used sensor and see if one, it'll communicate with it, which I'm pretty sure it will, exact same part number, and two, if there are any issues, if you know if these issues go away, and then obviously show that the new sensor is incapable of communicating with it. So with the original NOx sensor fin fitted, I'm going to clear the codes. I'll start the car, see if any other codes come straight back in, and then I'll start switching the sensor. So engine running. So no codes come straight back in with the original sensor fitted. So I've just removed the original sensor from the car. So the sensor that was fitted from the factory. This is the brand new part from Land Rover supplied just a few months ago to be fitted to this car. I'm gonna plug this in. We have no codes with the original sensor currently. I'm gonna plug this new brand new sensor in supplied by Land Rover. The new sensors are supposed to require an adapter, but you can actually modify the original adapter to fit. The pin out doesn't change. They're exactly the same, just for some reason they've updated it, so they don't fit and you have to fit an extra part. So a brand new sensor from Land Rover fitted. Lost, community, lost communication with NOx sensor. This code doesn't go away no matter what you do and it actually starts a 500 mile countdown on the dash until no start. So I'll erase this code and fit the used original sensor. So no codes currently again. So I've unplugged the brand new sensor, plugged in a used original sensor from another car with the matching Bosch part number as the original one had. So no codes, no codes come in with the second hand sensor from another vehicle. So I pretty much 100% believe that Land Rover have supplied the wrong part or the part is faulty. There's no other way around it. So I'll leave this second hand sensor on the car and that should be the car fixed now. Just done about 15 miles, done a, a forced dynamic DPF regeneration and no codes have been brought back into the engine powertrain control module.